Hey, how's it going everyone? So I wanted to talk to you today about a subject that I just recently became pretty fascinated with. Um, for guitar players, you know, there's so many things that we do to affect the tone, sound, and just overall, overall sound of, of what we get out of our guitars. Um, but for years, you know, I personally completely overlooked one of the most, now I find, critical aspects of, of tone and where it comes from. And that's basically um, what I have in this magic little pouch. It's guitar picks, you know. Um, every player sounds different on a guitar because of bone density and things like that. So it, it makes perfect sense that materials used to strike the strings, the plectrum, or the pick is going to make a drastic difference in the sound. And guess what? It does. Um, it also changes the way it feels and can add to your playing styles. So we're going to get into looking at different custom and uh, quality picks that I've acquired recently and a little review on each one and how to get them. Uh, you'll see some links in the bottom towards each pick and how to get them and realize sound is relative. It's an opinion, what sounds good or bad. So you know, a lot of what you'll hear is my opinion on these, but I'll try to be objective uh, about them. The best way, obviously, is going to be to do just what I did, and that's buy them, <laughs> spend money, and have them, play with them, see what you like. I've already found a few of my favorites, but I'm sure I will use them all. Uh, and, okay, well, here we go, on to the video. Well, here's the magic pick bag. A little leather pick pouch. The pick pouch came from V Picks. It was 10 bucks. Pretty cool. So here we have it. Alright, so here we're going to get into the meat of the pick video, or plectrum video. So, just want to point out that this isn't designed to tell you what the best pick is. There is no best pick. Every, every pick is going to be better and worse at different things. However, um, what this video is designed to do is to show you some of the general differences, nuances, and just give some helpful information towards um, some avenues you could go to change the tone of your guitar, the style, uh, how it feels, you know. The pick, the pick really is the last thing between you and the guitar, so it, it, it really helps to experiment. And hopefully this video can maybe give you a little guide call it that. So, on to that. Now, uh, I'm sure there are many picks that I have not, uh, that I have not consciously but left out of this video, probably because I just don't know about them. Uh, first thing is, is I'm not, I wasn't interested, and nor am I interested in uh, options of inexpensive, you know, throwaway type picks. And what, I, what I'm using as a reference there is the uh, focuses, there it goes, the old Fender I've chosen and I've used ever since I started playing guitar, <coughs> Fender Medium. Um, first thing to talk about in picks, you know, you have a couple of things. You have bevel, uh, if it's bevel, that has, if the edge is, is flat, rounded, uh, that affects the speed. There's a right hand and a left hand bevel for um, 
you know, to give you that, uh, to come off the strings quicker and easier for fast picking. Uh, combo picks are picks that have util usable multiple tips. Like, so the Fender's only got one real usable. You could use a rounded edge. Uh, probably not as common, but it's got the one pointed tip. Um, there's triple tips or tri tips and combo picks. All so have different edges and uh, corners, as they say, to, to utilize for different styles. So the reason I have a Fender pick again is only because that is the pick I always used, and just assumed that that was the pick, and never bothered over decades of playing to mess with a different pick and. You know, yeah, I've picked up a quarter when I had nothing else, or then I started using my fingers more with the acoustic, realized the sound differences, and anyway, got me into thinking. So, for example, everything, this is going to be the baseline, a fender medium. It's made out of a celluloid material. They call this a 351 shape, and it is approximately 0 0.80 millimeters thick. Um, we're going to do all of the tests on my Larave acoustic. It's a DV, uh, dreadnought size, the V is this cutaway, the Venetian cutaway, and O3 is just the model. So it's not one of their highest end models by far, uh, but it's, it's a nice guitar, all solid wood. So. I'm going to play the same stuff on every pick to get the best idea of it. Uh, I want to play some, some strummed chords, open, bar and then I'm going to do a little bit of a of a punchy picking single note thing so I want to try to do the same thing or close to it and you guys can hear hear what they're going to say after I play each little selection I'm going to just add what my real opinion or immediate impression of it is so we'll start with the fender medium feels normal to me, and go figure, because I've been playing with this pick for probably 30 years, so, but, <clears throat> yeah, I notice now, uh, things that I notice is quite flexible, uh, I have to do a lot of the work with this pick, um, it does allow me to be kind of precise, the same token, it's not a tremendously full sound and it's a little, the attack is a little clicky, meaning when I hit it, I can hear, I can hear the strings hitting it. So, um, also I'm going to point out that this is acoustic, what we're hearing. I found that everything, all of these nuances of all these picks, the differences are increased once you've plugged in your acoustic. But, uh, for this video, I don't, I don't have that ability, so we're going to do it this way. So, anyway, there's your Fender Medium. Everyone knows it. And that's our first, first one. So, now we're going to go into a company that basically manufactures. It's also who made this bag, which it's a company called V Picks. By the way, all links to all picks and all information are going to be in the description, with timelines if you want to fast forward or whatever to a certain pick. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the company. I have a few from them. <coughs> Vpix. It's a no-slip material. And let's see. We'll start with the. Uh, you know, we're going to start with the switch blade, and it's really it's a kind of like an acrylic. Uh, you can see this or see right through this. This is a acrylic pick. Uh, obviously, see through. This is 1.5 millimeter. It's got a really sharp point designed to just be played off that point. Uh, again, this is a real cool material. You call it plastic, but it's acrylic. It's designed, though, to, to, to almost be sticky. It, it, you know, I don't know if I dropped it, but 
It's it's actually stickier and harder to slip off than a Fender celluloid pick is. So, but let's give it a, a listen at that same same thing. So. If I wanted to really do a lot of heavy leads, I feel like, uh, yeah, this is accurate. That's a good way to put it. Switchblade. So 1.5 sharp point. Um, also from, whoops, also from VPix. So if you can see this one here or see through this one. They call this, this is a, a triple or a tri-tip. All of the three points, though, are the same. <clears throat> and it's, I guess it's a medium. 2.7, excuse me, 2.75 is the thickness. Um, it's got a little bit of a bevel. So it's not as sharp as the other one as well. Let's hear it. the string right off the bat it's it's yeah for if we're it's easy to compare it to the one we just went through but I would say in general this has a a, a, a little more of a subdued attack uh, definitely than the fender uh, like the the thickness is is obvious. You can feel it in your hand. It's it doesn't bend. There's no bend to this. However, uh, contrary to what you might think, without having bend, doesn't prevent you from doing anything. It actually actually maybe frees you up to be a little more stylistic. But still a sharp point. So. There you go again from VPix uh, acrylic 2.75 tri point or triple. There you go. Uh, oh yeah, and I think this comes in maybe blue and black, or the switchblade does as well, different colors. Check the link on the website. Go check them out. So what's the other one? <clears throat> yeah, cool. They call this the freakishly large and they have this in a round and a pointed and this is the pointed it is let's see here 2.75 thick but obviously it's a bigger pick than the medium tri-tip that we just looked at so this is oh there you go that focused in nice so sure uh, hello, pick. Bigger pick, almost like what you would call a bass pick size, but fits. I I've just found that now that I've tried bigger picks, I like the way they fit in my hand. Um, and you've got more pick to give uh, a little bit more behind it with everything you do. So maybe it requires a little more, a little less effort. Um, but let's let's hear it. The freakishly large pointed. So. <laughs> First thing, it's got push, so immediately this is a, a pretty loud pick out of them, and the bevel, nice bevel on it. 
I feel like I can work with it. And I can still, you know, get some good speed, flat picking, whatever you want to call it. I like this pick, you know. So V picks, freakishly large, 2.75 tri tip. <coughs> What's the next? <coughs> we have the, okay. Here's the freakishly large. They, it's the round, and they, and it's, oops, sorry, you couldn't see that. So here's freakishly large, round, and they call this the pearly gates. Focus. There you go. Sorry for my nails that need a manicure or whatever. The v -Pix. You can see the logo there. That's upside down. Whatever. Um, pearly gates. And that, again, that's actually 3.0 thick, and... This is the same pick, believe it or not, I believe it, that Santana uses. Um, Carlos Santana plays this pick. Um, got a testimonial and everything from him on their website. Go check it out, VPix. And it comes in not only this pearly gates, but a ruby, a clear, a pink, and a really cool night glow. So. Let's see what the Pick Santana uses, it sounds like. Hmm. Right off the bat, you, if you've not played, when you start playing with a rounder edged, a rounder pointed pick, um, you're going to notice it. It doesn't have, you're not, I want to say you're not as accurate with when you go and hit the inside the strings, so, but once you're, once you get it, it, it does give, gives you, I can see why, Santana would like this, um, and I do. Um, nice pick, Pearly Gates, 3.0 tri-tip, the Santana pick from VPix. All right, now this one's here, just really freaky. Um, this is the latest one that I've just received. In fact, I just received this one today with the case. Um, that I was hoping would, and it does let me fit all those, but I decided to get this from VPix when I was ordering that case. I was, didn't know what I was carrying all these around in, so I wanted it nice. Anyway, this is called the uh, Colossal, and with a ghost rim, and the ghost rim is something they do on a few of their picks. I mean, what a this thing is hugely thick. It is, oh, what is it? Five, eight, I don't even know. I won't, maybe it's eight, eight millimeters. I mean, geez, it's like quarter of an inch thick. So, and it's pretty sharp. It's pointy. So, didn't have any clue what I would think of it. But I figured, let me get it. Right off the bat, it's like, doesn't feel like a pick. It feels abnormal. So I did hear some reviews saying people get this for a practice pick, and after playing with this, moving to a regular pick actually assists you, so it, it's been used as a training device. Mm, sounds good, I mean, I understand, you know, you play everything on an acoustic and then switch to an electric, it's easier in a way, but we'll see, let's hear what it sounds like. And <laughs> back here. Mm. Alright, so we're back here with the, let me adjust it a little bit there, uh, back here with the 
Ghost Rim. Colossal. Whoa, what's that funny? It's a double rainbow. Oh, no. Um, anyway, so we heard that. <laughs> Stepping on to probably some picks that most people know of. Uh, Tusk. Okay. T U S Q. There you go. Tusk. And this is a 0.88 millimeter. It's slightly flexible. Um, got a rounded rounded edge you can play with and then two two more pointed edges uh, so the tusk you know the gold are supposed to be warmer bigger but similar in feel kind of to the way a fender heavy would feel in, in that it's a little flexible if I push it. To be honest it, it feels and sounds well, to me better than a fender medium. So, But then they have, uh, let's see here, the, the and then in a one and the white is supposed to be a little brighter sound, the gold is a little warmer. These are both a one millimeter. Let's see if we can hear that, so... Acoustically, even without this poor speakers or whatever, um, my, to my own ear, acoustically, can barely tell a difference, if any. I don't think I'd identify one in, in a blind test. But I believe if, if it was plugged in, you'd notice a subtle difference. But So moving on, <coughs> excuse me, to the other tusk. Now this is supposed to be a deep sound with the gray. Can we get it to focus? Uh, and it's a two millimeter, so it's definitely not bendable. And yeah. Um, so now that I've actually started playing picks that are not flexible, um, to be honest, I prefer the feel of this. And I can tell a tonal difference as well. I like the. I'm I'm starting to like a little bit of a bulk of a pick, and don't need the flexibility. So um, two points to tri tip. Two points with a round. Now round is round's nice if you just want to kind of strum around and not poke into the strings, I guess. Uh, catch a string, and you want to have a more even strumming pattern. If you want to be a little bit more precise, single note plucks and things, you know, a more pointed tip would work. So, tusk, nice, not too expensive, made by Graph Tech. Good option. Now we get into some kind of cool stuff. Um, something made by Timber Tones. So, we're going to start with the hardest, now Timber Tones is wood. Now wood is really cool. Obviously it's organic and the guitar is made out of wood, which is organic. So there's a certain symbiotic relationship there between playing your, although the strings are metal, you are resonating a wood guitar and plucking those strings with a wood 
instrument or plectrum kind of makes sense and uh, well, makes sense mentally too. It just, it, I don't know, feels good, at least in my brain. The wood has a nice, again, feel to it. It's a natural feeling. Uh, sound, and we're going to start with, sound is, is, is derived, these are all going to be in a classic kind of a 351 shape like the Fender Medium, real close. Um, I think Fender Medium's right here, so yeah, they're about identical. 351 shape. A little bit of a bevel down on the playing tip, which is nice. Uh, we'll start with the hardest one, which should give uh, a little sharper sound, so we'll see. There you go, and that was an African ebony. It looks pretty black focus, which it's not going to, but pretty black. Uh, then you go with a really like the way this looks. It's a zebra wood. Uh, hard to focus again. There we go for a little bit. Uh, by the way, the African Ebony had a hardness rating of 3320. There's a scale out there for that. Uh, you can look it up, hardness rating scale. 3320, pretty good. <clears throat> Zebra is 2160. Supposedly, you'll get a little mellower sound as you get a softer wood. in my hand because they feel the same size. I'm used to the, the tip angle and everything because of the, they're the classic 351 shape. So these are a nice pick for me. And by the way, this isn't about price this video, but I will point out I don't know how long any of these picks will last yet because I've not had them that long. Um, I can't comment on their durability and longevity. However, these are not expensive so if they do have last at all which i'm sensing they will ah, they're like four dollars a piece so really nice picks uh what do we got next oh i'm sorry we had one more this is this is the softest of them from timber tones it's called babinga bubinga wood and it's a, a low as an 830 on that hardness scale so let's give this a listen. There you go. So what I, I detect here is obviously they all feel in the hand the same, they're identical size. Um, this pick versus the ebony, to me, you can notice the attack difference. That being a, a pretty mellow attack. It's a little sharper attack. I can hear it a little bit more. So, like those picks, though. They're great. Now, this is one that's really, really neat. Uh, if you're into collector stuff, jewelry, uh, literally, like, s items that you would almost put in a case. Uh, Picks and Stones offers some amazing rare, rare jewelry quality picks. Now this is not one of their higher end models. There's ones that have fossils in them and I mean they're insane. This is an example. I, I wish it would focus. This is an example of Brazilian agate. It's a, it's a stone. Uh, the coloring, the lines are beautiful. This is in a, they call it a combo pick, and it's a really true combo pick because you have three distinct points. It's a 1, 3, C. So it's a size 1 point, it's a, the, the rounded, and then something they call a claw very 
aggressive. So this this pick's made to be played three different ways, and trust me, you get three distinct uh, sounds out of these three three corners. Um, I, I really like this pick. I think it's beautiful, and um, I like the way it plays as well. It really does look good with the guitar. It's everyone I've shown it to is remarked on it. It's, you know how nice it looks. So. Um, this is two millimeter, by the way. Low attack, nice smooth sound. It's this, and it does not bend. Do not try. You can break this. Uh, we'll hear it. <laughs> Yeah, it's real interesting. All the different picks, like I was saying earlier, it's you get you get little nuances out of each pick that actually, to me, I will I'll play almost differently depending on the pick. Now I I can do certain little tonal sounds, harmonics, pull offs, whatever it might be, just utilizing different parts of the pick. Um, each different pick's got its own I don't know little wheelhouse of goodies that it can pull off so yeah this one i really like though brazilian agate what else do we have all right we've got this is from surf pick <clears throat> now surf pick basically utilizes one of the hardest woods out there it's lingam vitae or vitae i don't know that i'm pronouncing it right it's 4500 on the hardness as compared to that african ebony now this is a particular pick I got this early on. I didn't realize it was as small as this. This size, by the way, kind of call that like a, a gypsy jazz. So it's smaller than the Fender. I wish you could see that. Okay. Anyway, so gypsy jazz. You can oh, there's a little better. It's it's the wood, but then you have that black on top. It's a rubber. Uh, for like a grip, so it's it's really nice and grippy. Um, you obviously only play this single point. It's a little smaller than a Fender. Uh, really a hard wood, though. Let's we'll see what it sounds like. this I like the way it feels it's a, it's it's small though I don't know why now that I play in gypsy jazz and stuff people say a lot of guys go to these really small picks they feel like they got more mobility I don't know to me even with the grip when I start going with a small pick for myself personally it feels like I don't know it doesn't feel as stable in my hand I feel like there's more chance of it moving falling out of position uh, I feel like I got to hold hold it much tighter to maintain control of it. So I, I like it, but I don't want to say it. I love the look. I like the whole, but it's not my favorite pick. And I, I guess mostly due to its small size, which led me to after I got this, I said, well, I like the the wood concept and the lith lithum lingam vate. So from that same company, Surf Pick. I bought what he calls his base pick. It's tri-point, identical points, so I like that. If, if these do wear, I have three areas. Uh, no rubber, but honestly, this wood is, is fine, and I think with the natural wood, once you get a little moist, you'll get a little tack to it. Um, I love the edge. It's thicker. This is a 3 mil. Uh, so right away it feels good in my hand, it's bigger, I feel like I have more control. Yeah, um, nice edge, not too pointy, not too round, good control pick. Yeah, and that wood feels just nice, it feels warm, it feels, it feels organic. Uh, whoops. Um, flies out of your hand every now and then, but nope, I like it. Good pick. What do we got next? Uh, let's see, I've got my cheat sheet here. 
So yeah, this was my first foray, as they say, into when I started to Google, you know, what is the best pick? Uh, what really came up quickly and often was the company called Blue Chip. So Blue Chip is a, they, they market it as a self-lubricating composite with almost no wear and supposedly one of the closest replicas of a tortoise shell sound. Now the blue chip, um, you know, you would hold it and you'd say, ah, it's plastic. Okay, well, yeah, it is. It's a composite. This is, what's really nice is their website, there's a whole bunch of different pick sizes, different shapes, different bevels, different thicknesses. This is a particular one, TAD 1R. So TAD is, it's got three tips. Um, they're all different. So that's always great. I like the three different tips. Oops, sorry. Three tips and the 1R, or I'm sorry, two tips, 1R. So the two tips are the same. 1R means one rounded. And that's, again, I was talking earlier about that for strumming. It's very good. Um, 45 is the thickness, and 45 means 45 one thousandths, which basically works out to, I guess about a one millimeter, but it's not, it is a little flexible, but not too much. And what's really a nice feature of blue chips for us, like the additional fee, if you can see, oh, there it was, you can see, they'll engrave your name on it. So, I was psyched about that. It comes with a little $4. You can get yourself a keychain holder for the blue chip. I don't use that because I did when I just had the blue chip and I was really psyched to carry my little keychain holder and that was nice. But then when I became a pick collector, I realized that's not going to hold them all. So I have a blue chip pick holder for anybody who wants it. Um, so there you go, there's the blue chip, it's a 45. Um. I like it. When I first got the blue chip, I this was the first one I had ever since playing Fenders Forever. Um, pretty much, no I shouldn't say that, there was another one I got before, we're, we're going to get to that. But then I got this blue chip, and I was like, oh, my God, I love these. I love them, I love them. And I kind of do. Um, decided to get another one. By the way, that blue chip had no bevel. So I decided I didn't know much at the time about the bevels. Would I like a speed bevel or not? So I got one with no bevel. Uh, after that, I was going to get another blue chip. I had now had some thicker picks. So I said, oh, I'll get a thicker one. I wound up not getting nearly as thicker as I thought. Uh, I got a 50, and the other one was already a 45. I thought I had gotten a 40. Long story short, so still got it monogrammed, but I got this one with a speed bevel, and it's a 50, so it's a little thicker. And I will say, I noticed the speed bevel immediately, so it, it glides off the string quicker. It doesn't seem to catch and you are able to get through through the string quicker, so it does. I can completely see how a speed bevel will increase playing speed and, and picking speed. Blue chips, really nice. Uh, again, not all about price, but if you're looking for budget, these are one of the more expensive options that I'm showing you. Um, so the other blue chip, which I'm going to get into using, and like I never messed with anything but finger picks, I did occasionally finger pick um, and go pick less, but I had never in my life played with a thumb pick. And so after realizing blue chip makes some really cool stuff, I wanted to take a look at their thumb picks. So I got one, and right out of the box, I wasn't sure if I'd like it, be able to play with it. Um, I got the one that 
it was an, uh, an option to have one with a little more rounded. You can see the rounded playing section, the pick area. But uh, I know, you know, walking blues and things like that are popular, but you can do a lot of stuff with them, so let's just listen this way. And <laughs> a bit more and get a little bit better at maybe some uh, some nice uh, bluegrass or country style picking. <coughs> well, we'll move on to the next one. Wegan, Wagen, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but I saw a lot of references to this as not being a very costly option, but high performance. They're supposed to sound really similar, again, to a tortoise. By the way, I have not ever personally played a tortoise shell pick. And I will not try to acquire one uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, so I will just assume or presume from what I'm told uh, a tortoise shell pick is supposedly the holy grail. But now that I'm seeing all these different tonalities and all these picks, I'm sure a tortoise shell sounded good, but there's wonderful sounds coming out of lots of different materials. So we don't need to kill the poor turtles. So, there you go. Here's the Wegan. It's a tri-point. Got a real nice feature of an indentation, or a dip, if you can see it, in the center. So, with grooves. And they're running differently on both sides with a different depth groove. So you can see which way it feels best in your hands. It is speed beveled. Um, it's about a 3.5 thickness. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what it sounds like. It feels, I don't, you know, for myself, I almost think I might prefer it without the grooves and just the, just the indentation. The grooves, I don't know, they seem a little strange to me, but you might like them. Got one more onto uh, onto these picks. These are all accessible through uh, Custom Guitar Saddles or CustomSaddles.com. I'll have a link. Uh, Bob Colosi. And so, yeah. Now, this is a smaller, but a buffalo horn. So it's authentic buffalo horn. It's about a 1.5. The thing about buffalo horn is, again, this is supposedly uh, a real close emulation to a tortoise shell sound. Uh, when I first got this pick, the reason I got this pick, this was the first quote-unquote nicer pick than that Fender Medium I got. And the reason I got this pick is because, if you can see, these pins on my guitar are a dyed clunk. They're a dyed bone, and I also have a West African hard ivory saddle in there. And I acquired those parts from this website, and then I noticed he had picks. I said, ah, uh, why not? Let me see what this is. As I was playing with my Fender. So I got my new guitar, had it worked on, this pick comes, I obviously could, didn't play anything until I figured I'd wait till my guitar came back with the nice new pins and all that. And I played this, and immediately I was, I want to say, almost amazed. Uh, but let's let's give it a quick listen. <laughs>
right off the bat, I said, oh my god, it's hard, it doesn't bend, it doesn't... I played it, and it felt like my guitar just suddenly breathed, uh, and really the full, full frequencies came out. So this is what kicked it off as to me appreciating guitar picks. Uh, kind of started to wear pretty quick, I mean, comparative to other picks, uh, I mean, Fender Mediums, sure, play half the song and throw it away, but uh, these, these weren't as cheap as the $4 wood picks, so to see it wearing away, I was like, oh, okay, but is what it is. After I got this and I started to collect all these other picks, I realized I like a larger size, I like them a little thicker, so I, I reordered one from him at a, it's a base size, it's a tri-tip. Now this is a bigger pick, and it's a 3.0 thickness, so right there and it's speed bevel but the way it is it's not every side so you can if you flip it one way you've got the speed bevel if you flip it the other you, you have a, a more hard edge and distinctly you can feel that when you when you play your strings <laughs> It's not black, it's almost, it's, it's really a beautiful feeling. And, you know, it's not wood. These aren't the stone. These are, these are animal. These are horn. Um, they feel organic. Uh, I really like the feel of this pick tremendously, and I play this, use this one a lot. Same exact size, same exact thickness. He also offers them in bone. Um, now the bone, 3-0, same thing. Tri-tip, three tips, and these are these are triple use tips. Um, one, two, three, which is really sweet. Now in the bone, it's cream colored, bone colored, really nice but distinctly different sound, much brighter attack. Too, you can tell if this was plugged in, it would be even really dramatic. I've played, I've, I've actually played and didn't, done some recording with both of these picks in front of me and switched between the two for, for rhythm verse uh, the lead sections. And yeah, it almost you would almost think, oh, he changed an effect or someone, it's a different guitar. Even. No, picks alone can do that. So. Uh, in an experimentation thing, I decided then, and this will be the last pick I have to show you, uh, it's probably one of the, that and the wild-looking colossal one, which, that honestly is almost so strange, you wouldn't use it, except it's a weapon. Um, but I asked him what was the thickest, oh, and this again is from Custom Guitar, Bob Colossi, so what's the thickest buffalo horn bass size pick you could make me? And his blanks are, he's got a 4.5. So it's speed beveled. It's actually got grain. You can't really make it out in this. Um, it's a beautiful pick to look at. You can see striping and grain of the bone of the, the buffalo horn. This is a buffalo horn pick. Uh, speed beveled, thick, the 
acoustically, you, you, you hear a lot of string. It's interesting. You can hear it hitting the string. Um, but when I did plug this in, it, it was a lot more subdued. I think is the thicker the pick is, what I'm sensing is the thicker the pick is in your hand, whether preference or not. It, if it gets too thick, it, it requires a little more effort to get in between the strings and be precise. Uh, however, too thin, then uh, almost is, is the same thing. Uh, it makes you have to be precise. So there's a fine line between helpful in my eyes and, and being a hindrance. However, if you were strumming, a thick pick is good. But what, what a thick pick I'm seeing is definitively good for is if you had any hand injuries or finger injuries and things like that, a little bit of a thicker pick takes some of the work out. It lets the pick do the work. There's mass behind it. So, like, I can hold this easily without fear of it coming out very lightly. I have a very, very light grip with it. What it actually still brings out sound of the guitar verse like the little buffalo pick that was about the same strength but you get so much more it's just more mass so this is my run over of my little pick review how to get them while you can kind of video. If anyone is interested in a specific pick or a rundown of that pick, I would be able to provide a non-acoustic but plugged in, much more accurate audio representation of some picks. I just don't know that it's required or people will be that interested in it, but if so, you can always shoot me a message on the channel and I will uh, see what I can do on setting that up via my PA and the direct, direct out from uh, this guitar has an LR Bags Lyric um, in it, so I can plug it in right here and yeah. It is a little more noticeable, but sure, we'll see. Hope you enjoyed that. Shoot me any questions. Uh, I'm going to put the links in the description, and that way you can fast forward to all of the cool spots. Like it, share it, thumbs up it, subscribe to the video and my channel, and cool. I hope you liked it. Happy New Year. See you.